All right, guys, uh, my guest today is an integrative dietitian and high performance coach. She has helped thousands of women permanently lose weight, eliminate the need for medication, lose stubborn belly fat. I need some of that <laughs> and reverse chronic illnesses. She's the best selling author of Cave Women Don't Get Fat, and she's appeared on Dr. Oz's Today Show and Fox News. And guys, she's right here, and we're getting one on one. Esther Bloom is here. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. I am so sorry for the trouble. <laughs> it's okay. It happens in technology Ooh. world, you know? Oh How goodness. are you doing today? I am great. I'm so happy it's Friday. How are you doing? Oh, man. Listen, I've been saying all week, I want <laughs> Esther to help me because I have insomnia, Esther. I need some help. Well, what's some going help. on? Are you not falling asleep? Are you not staying asleep? Like, what's going on? You know, a lot of times I'm up, I'm I'm working, I'm on my computer, I'm, you know, doing something. And then when it's time to go to sleep, it's like, okay, I thought I was sleepy. Now I'm not sleeping. And then I'm, I find myself laying in the bed. So then I open my computer, I watch some YouTube videos. <laughs> and it's like, man, the other day, the uh, day before yesterday, I didn't go to bed yesterday morning until about eight o'clock in the morning up all night. And I was like, oh no, this is crazy. And it started for me last year in July when we had a huge earthquake here. And I haven't been able to sleep uh, properly since then. And I had never had a problem with uh, insomnia before. And now it's just, it's crazy. And I think a lot of times my mind is racing about what happens if another earthquake comes? What is this bigger and bigger? You know, it's just, I think anxiety in a sense is uh, my problem. And then thinking about a whole host of things a lot of times is the case where I can't go to sleep. Right. And it, it's um, it's PTSD, but it's also not allowing your brain to actually produce melatonin. So your, your body does the most healing and repair between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. And if you're a night shift worker, it's between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. So 10 and 2 is the magic window, day or night. So you do want to front load your sleep. And that means you have to get off screens by, you know, nine, basically 930, where okay. you have a really good sleep hygiene regimen where you, you know, start dimming the lights, um, low level lights, you brush your teeth, you read a book, or I recommend for you with PTSD, you start to rewire your brain biochemistry. There's a great app that I recommend. It's called Insight Timer. It's free. It's got thousands of meditations on it. Um, and what it does, meditation, even 10 minutes a day, it rewires the fight or flight center in your brain. But it does take at least 30 to 40 days. So you've <laughs> got to, it's not an overnight fix, especially if you've been dealing with this for a year. But mm -hmm. I can't even tell you, like so many of my clients sleep with the phone next to their head. And I'm like, get the phone away. No, nothing, Ooh. nothing in the bedroom, no screens, no technology. Like, um, and you've got to give your brain, your the pineal gland in your brain time to produce melatonin. That means a dark, quiet room. Yeah. No screen okay. time before bed. Yeah. Dark, dark, quiet room. I can do mm -hmm. because in my house, I have nothing but uh, blackout curtains everywhere. So my room, my bedroom is completely dark. No light comes into it. So you're saying what I need to do is get rid of the screens dim the room or well, get the room dark and, and just relax. And I should start this, you say around 9 p.m.? 9 p.m., brush your teeth, read a book, relax, just nothing with technology and you can pop on an insight timer. I know technically the insight timer will be on a phone or whatever, but you could put it all the way you know, across the room mm -hmm. and just play a meditation and relax. Or you do a meditation, you know, nine o'clock and then the goal is to get you sleepy, relax, you go to bed at 10. The other thing you can do is take like an Epsom salt bath or take, you know, 400 milligrams of magnesium at night before bed, because that also calms down the nervous system. Magnesium is a vasodilator. So it relaxes the heart muscle, relaxes the muscle mm -hmm. and the bodies. Um, it repairs and heals and just calms the nervous system down. So it's like a a nice mineral tranquilizer, if you will. So I recommend you take at least 400 milligrams at bedtime. And that should really help you kind of start to shift and heal from that PTSD. 
and the, of okay. the earthquake, because that's a very real fear. The, the problem with trauma is, you know, we, we think our, our nervous system still thinks the trauma is alive and real, even right. though it's a year ago already. Mm -hmm. So we have to let our bodies know it's safe to relax and sleep. Okay. All yeah. right. So, so I'll start, that's something I'll start. And the name of that app again is Insight? Insight Timer. Insight yeah. Timer. Okay. Yeah. Make sure yeah. I, I, I do that. All right. So, so how can people fix chronic uh, digestive problems. You know, uh, a, a number of people often talk about having that problem and some of them don't know where that comes from. W what is your insight on that? So I do a lot of stool testing in my practice. I, I want to make like a slogan for my shirt. It says poop is my business. I, <laughs> I look, I like I roll up my sleeves and get my meat hooks into these, into these stool tests. And I look and, you know, a lot of people who see me have parasites. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they pick up um, E. coli from like poorly cooked or handled beef um, or unwashed lettuce, or, you know, even though we're not eating out as much during COVID, like we're still doing takeout or we're just not washing our produce well enough. So um, parasites can cause digestive issues, um, low stomach acid, because when you don't have a lot of stomach acid, it's very mm. easy to pick up bugs and worms and yeast and all sorts of funky things. Some of it is just stress. Like if you're talking about constipation, you know, a lot of people just don't have toilet hygiene either. I talked about sleep hygiene, right? Uh -huh. Toilet hygiene means, and I think this is easier for dudes than it is for ladies. I'm not <laughs> sure why. Like dudes are like, I'm going to grab the paper or my phone or what, you know, a book and I'm going to sit in there for a while. Women are like, I don't have time for this. I'm not going to sit. But I highly recommend one of those stools, like the, the squatty potty stools. So it puts your body in a squatting position. Or if you're really agile, you can literally squat on your toilet seat mm -hmm. because that puts your body into a proper position to poop. It relaxes the sphincter muscles. Your, your listeners are like, <laughs> what did I just step into right now? Oh, yeah. but, you do need to kind of get the proper, cause like toilet, modern toilets are not, that's not proper pooping position. So if you're struggling, you wanna get in good position and the squatty potty elevates your legs if you're not into squatting. Um, but then you wanna start to look at nutrition. Okay, number one, you wanna get um, a great remedy for constipation and bloating and heartburn that I work, uh, that works really well for my people is I have them juice an entire bunch of celery first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. So it's like, you know, eight stalks, you drink all the juice. And if you have a uh, heartburn or reflux, you can add in two tablespoons of aloe gel, like fresh, you get aloe in the mm. produce aisle, right? Um, so you take a, like a two inch cross section of gel, stir it in there. So you wanna make sure that you're getting uh, celery juice first thing in the morning, 20 minutes before a meal. That undoes a lot of the inflammation and the heartburn. It gives your mm. liver a good flush. So you'll have a bowel movement first thing in the morning. That is very, very helpful. The next is you may want to add in some digestive fire, some digestive enzymes, or you can squeeze lemon in your water or add a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar or put, um, you can get like Swedish bitters and put 10 to 15 drops in your tongue, like 15 minutes before meals. Mm -hmm. um, Americans are very used to sweet and salty palates. We're not used to bitter. We don't, we avoid bitter greens. We avoid right. bitter vegetables, right? Very common in other countries to have bitter medicinal soups and salads and like eat the bitter foods that stimulates your uh, bile production in the gallbladder to start stimulating the digestive process. So you want to make sure you're getting um, bitters, bitter greens also do wonders for digestion. And last but not least, something really simple um, that a lot of people don't want to do, but it really helps is getting rid of like flour products and especially gluten because flour and water makes paste. So okay. if you're eating a lot of bagels and bread and pizza and pasta, like that can really gum up your works. And it, instead you start introducing you know, plantains and sweet potatoes and white potatoes and beans and rice, just real and oats, like real food that and fruits and veggies, of course, real food that your body can recognize and understand and break down. Mm. Often like that alone solves a ton of constipation issues for people. So starting with the basics, right? 
Starting with the basics, so we won't be full of you know what. <laughs> I call that F O S. Yeah. 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 All right. So, so the next thing that a number of men and women deal with is that stubborn belly fat. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, a lot of the things you just talked about is where that stems from for us. You know, foods that we eat. You know, things that's high in sugars or you know breads and those different types of things. And you have a regiment where people, or you have a, a recipe where people can get rid of that stubborn body fat. Let's talk about why belly fat is so stubborn in the first place. Well, belly fat is often a lifestyle issue. People just think, oh, if I lose weight, the belly fat's gonna go away. But often they'll lose weight, but the body stays in the exact same shape it was before. Mm. So belly fat is a combination usually uh, again, and I do metabolic testing to confirm or deny this. I do metabolic and blood testing, but it's usually a combination of high stress hormones called cortisol and poor blood sugar management, poor insulin management, meaning your blood sugar's out of whack. So then your stress hormones start getting firing, you know, your blood sugar drops. And then your cortisol spikes up. This is why a lot of people wake up in the middle of the night and have insomnia mm. and very poor sleep. Um, and so, and most people aren't willing to do the things it takes to actually get rid of that body fat. The first thing is sleep. Okay. Yes, I'm talking to you, my friend. Sleep. <laughs> you cannot write checks that your body will, you're good, like writing checks your body doesn't want to cash when you don't sleep. <sighs> so you got to get to bed earlier. Everyone thinks, oh, I get my second wind at night and I'm so productive. Get to bed earlier and wake up earlier. I was up at like 545 wide awake doing my holiday cards this morning, sending emails. And that was all before I even had breakfast or walked the dog. So like, uh. or got my son ready for school. So you know, it's just go start training yourself to go to bed earlier and wake up earlier. It's the best time of day. No one else is in my uh, is up in my house. I get more done in that hour than I do any other time of day. So um, sleep. OK, stress management. Also, if you're super stressed, what do you do? You go to the pantry and you face plant into a trough of potato chips and chocolate chips. Uh, <laughs> like uh, people are like snorting lines of chocolate chips <laughs> off the counter and like <laughs> inhaling all the potato chips. So, right. And, and we're stress eating like crazy. Everyone is, is really stress eating or stress drinking. They're self-medicating with booze. You gotta talk and, and process and give um, words to your emotions and your stress. Our stress resiliency is low right now, guys. Mm -hmm. We have to be so kind of, I myself include, we gotta be really kind of gentle to ourselves, okay? Getting outside in nature, getting proper light exposure in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. Because that regulates your sleep-wake cycles. Um, taking a bath at night calling a friend, journaling, talking to a therapist, getting some acupuncture, working out, like all of these stress management techniques are really clear. Aside, are, are, are super important. Aside from that, let's talk about the basics of diet because everyone wants to know, well, what the heck am I going to eat after I've, you know, meditated and, and gone for right. my walk and lifted my weights? Okay. So number one, protein. Protein is we're not a, a colleague of mine always says we're not over fat we're under muscled oh okay your doctor is never telling you hey as you age you need to build more muscle and eat more protein the dietetic association even has very outdated recommendations on the amount of protein we need as adults especially aging adults we want to prevent age related muscle loss that means for most of us, we require at least a gram of protein per pound of body weight. So if you're 150 pounds, you're going to need 150 grams of protein. Mm. That's about 21 to 23 ounces a day. That means you eat like four ounces of protein five times a day or five ounces of protein four times a day. What if you're obese or overweight and you want to lose 50 pounds? Let's say you're 220 and you want to be 180. Then you base your protein numbers on your goal weight, 180. Because you probably okay. don't need 220 pounds, uh, 220 grams of protein, but you might need at least 180. The bottom line is this. If you don't want to pay attention to any of that or it's kind of your <laughs> eyes are glazing over right now, like, oh, my God. 
just think of it this way, get at least four to six ounces of protein at meals and one to two times a day at snacks. That's kind of just a great overall. If okay. you don't know how much that is, hold up the palm, the palm of your hand, right? <laughs> uh, you know, that's about the amount of protein portion that you need. Why am I so obsessed with protein? Because it's going to maintain your muscle mass, help build healthy testosterone levels. And yes, women need testosterone too. Um, helps with your blood sugar management, your cravings, your hunger. Protein is the only nutrient that shuts off hunger in the brain. Protein sustains your blood sugar for over six hours or at okay. least six hours after you eat it. Carbohydrates will raise your blood sugar and crash it two hours later. So like a chicken breast and a donut each have about two to 300 calories, right? Mm -hmm. But the chicken is going to maintain your blood sugar for hours, whereas the donut is going to give you the spike and crash. So either have a chicken on your donut <laughs> or just skip the donut all together. <laughs> okay. Now, now what about people who are like myself vegans but we still have stubborn belly fat how, how what, what what would you recommend for vegans when it comes to getting the amount of protein we might need in a day yeah you're going to struggle it's very hard to get the amount of protein you need in a day so here's what i would tell you to do number 1 um and and the thing about veganism is and i have nothing personally against it i do put some of my clients on it to heal okay. up a fatty liver heal some chronic viral issues but long term you do suffer with muscle loss and you do fight that belly fat cuz you're you're eating too many carbs like so it, to get 4 ounces of protein from uh from like quinoa you have to eat 2 cups of quinoa that is a ton of carbs so it's not metabolically efficient. So here are your workarounds, okay? Number one, um, pea protein is vegan and it's very high in branch chain amino acids, which okay. help muscle recovery and repair. So I would get at least two scoops of pea protein at a meal. That will give you like 30, 20, 30, maybe 40 grams of protein, usually around 30. Number two, you can take branch chain amino acids. I would take five grams before and after your workout to help build muscle. Number three, you can also take what's called glutamine powder. And all of these are, they're not, they're not plant-based sources. They're chemically made, but they, mm. uh, your body will take them up very well. Glutamine um, is what's called a conditionally essential amino acid. Your body can make it, but under times of stress or muscle loss, it needs more. So you can take a tablespoon two to three times a day. And I love glut glutamine just for gut inflammation and healing up um, chronic gut issues. But yeah, as a vegan, it's very hard. I, I don't recommend soy protein. Soy suppresses thyroid function and interferes with testosterone absorption. So it's not good for hormone balance. But certainly couple up your proteins, you know, make complete proteins, a little beans and rice, uh, you know, peanut butter and uh, on toast, you know, those are okay. Um, Protein sources, you can have lots and lots of vegetables. Vegetables do have a couple grams of protein, but it, it may be a challenge for you, I'm afraid. Uh, Hate uh, to be the bearer of bad news. Sorry. <laughs> I'd say start eating, start introducing some animal protein, you know, even just, just eggs or wild Alaskan salmon is a great starting point. Both of those are sustainable protein sources. I may have to go back. <laughs> yeah. You could do hemp protein too. Hemp is okay, but lower than pea. I want to ask because you are a professional and I always want to hear people's backstories. How did you get started? This is like my favorite story to tell. So um, I come from a long line of doctors, nurses, dietitians. My grandfather lived to be 105 and a half. Wow. And he was one of the first graduating classes of NYU Medical School in 1921. Okay. And he became an ears, nose, and throat doctor. He was like the tonsil king of Brooklyn, New York. Um, in his house, he had like a four-story house in Flatbush. 
And on the first floor, he had a consultation room, a treatment room, he had an operating room, and then a 12 bed pediatric recovery room and two adult beds. So like he worked on Al Capone's guys when they'd get their noses broken. Um, but he, he took the, my tonsils out and my grandmother put the ether mask over my face. He trained her to be the anesthesiologist, even though she was a dietitian. Mm. So like I grew up watching him treat patients then um, and treating me. And he had like the most steady hands because he was also an artist. He did surgery till he was 80 and he practiced medicine four days a week till he was 95 and a half and then spent the last 10 years of his life painting full time. Then my father was a dermatologist. My mother was a nurse. And so I loved all the, the healing and um, the science. It was like such a bond with me and my parents to be able mm -hmm. to like talk about hospital cases and talk about biochemistry and clinical cases they saw in practice. But I didn't want to go to medical school. And my grandfather was so pissed. He was like, <laughs> he was like, what are you doing? That is the stupidest. I said, Poppy, I'm going to be a dietitian because it's got all the, it's a pre-med degree basically minus the physics. And I really stunk at physics and I hated it. So I said, <laughs> I'm going to be a dietitian. And he was like, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You will never be a success and you're never going to make any money. And I was like, bring it on. Watch me. <laughs> so, um, you know, he, he got to see me in his life on TV. He didn't know my books got published, but, <laughs> um, but you know, he lit such a fire in me and challenged me. And at the end of the day, of course, he was proud of me. And yes, of course I made money and was successful, but, um, you know, I, I'm so grateful I had the career I had and, you know, working in hospitals, the first five years of my career was mm -hmm. the greatest gift. I mean, talk about teaching you gratitude. I used to come home and be like, I can breathe on my own. I can right. walk on my own. I don't have cancer. I don't have AIDS. I am a healthy human. Mm. Like you, I do, I'm not waiting for a liver transplant. Right. You know, you're just so grateful. You don't take your health for granted. A, you take like really good care of yourself, but B, you just have such a perspective on mm. what matters in life. And what matters in life is your health, because health is wealth, right? You don't have your health, you don't have anything. That's true. Um, and it's just the small things. It's not like the handbags you have, although those are nice, but <laughs> <laughs> or the shoes you wear. It's really the personal relationships you have and um, enjoying just the little simple moments in life. And like that, it just grounded me in such an extraordinary way. So that's how I all got started. And it's 26 years later, I'm still doing this as passionate as ever. Oh, that's great. Guys, we're talking to Esther Bloom. Is it Bloom or Blum? Blum, yes. Blum. Okay, Blum. Uh, and uh, if you guys have questions, you can ask them right now. They'll appear in the box here, and I'll, I'll, I'll put them on so um, she can see them and we can read them. Um, I want to talk about Cave Women Don't Get Fat. Now, I thought about that when I first saw that title, and I was like, <laughs> I don't know about that. But then I thought about Betty Rubble and Wilma. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. I was like, you know, Betty Rubber had a little bloop. So that could be true. So let's talk about that book. How, how did that book come about? And what is the meaning behind Cave Women Don't Get Fat? Yeah, so um, I wrote Cave Women Don't Get Fat is a paleo diet book for women. If you look at a lot of the paleo diet books out there, they are written for men and by men. And most of the clinical studies out there are done on men. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? Men don't have a menstrual cycle. Men don't have fluctuating monthly hormones. You guys, I, I always say in my next life, I'm coming back as a man because that <laughs> must be like my guys in my life, they have like one mood and it's happy. And I'm like, what on earth is that like? That's amazing. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, but all seriousness, I wanted to write a book that addressed the hormone fluctuations in women and took women into account and women's bodies and their fluctuating hormones because women actually 
have different nutritional needs than men. Mm -hmm. The first half of a woman's cycle, the first two weeks, the woman, a woman is the most insulin sensitive, meaning she can have a lot of extra carbs, you know, um, she can do lots of cardio, she's much more mel and, and lift weights, she's much more flexible metabolically. The second half of a woman's cycle is the luteal phase. That's when things go wonky. That's when estrogen and progesterone just plummets in the toilet. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden we've got craving irritability, insomnia, because we're not, when progesterone drops, we don't make the neurotransmitter GABA to help us sleep. So um, all That's of what that is? Oh. <laughs> GABA. GABA, 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 baby. Gamma amino butyric acid. This is like a biochemistry lesson in your show. <laughs> So we need, you know, and that's the time when I actually have my women double up on protein. I have them eat more calories. You burn one to 300 calories more. Mm -hmm. um, there's about three days of your cycle. And believe me, women, we all know when that is because you're just hungry, <laughs> snarfing down whatever's in front of you. When you double up on protein, you do some strength training during that phase. You really don't have to gain that PMS weight that most mm -hmm. women gain. So I address the needs of uh, a woman's cycle. And I also, but men follow this book too, believe right. me. Um, the other pieces, I help you find your own unique carb tolerance, okay? Mm. So everyone's carb tolerance is different and it changes over time. If you're dealing with the muffin top, if you're dealing with, um, you know, your muffin top turning into a cake top, <laughs> right? Your insulin sensitivity is worsening over time. So you want to reinstate that. And a great way to do that is with, you know, you could do some intermittent fasting, but also you can do a cave women jumpstart detox, which is you, the, um, the only fruits and vegetables you eat for a couple weeks are, uh, pardon me, the only carbs you eat are from fruits and vegetables. Fruits and and vegetables. then you slowly add in half a cup of cooked starch from a sweet potato, um, a, a root vegetable, then you could, if you tolerate beans and legumes, you can, those aren't classically paleo, but if you tolerate them, that's fine. Um, you could introduce some rice, some quinoa, you know, you slowly introduce different types and it slowly increase the amount of carbs and you find out your sweet spot. Well, gee, can I get away with a half a cup a day, or do I need a cup a day or a cup and a half a day? Or does my difference fluctuate on my workout days versus my non workout days? So I help people really nail down the amount of carbs they need. I have them on a very protein rich, quality fat, fibrous diet, fiber rich diet, lots of veggies too. And, okay. And so, because you was talking about muffin top, you know, we, we call it the fupa, you know. The fupa. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fupas are sexy. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta own your fupa <laughs> you gotta own it fupas are sexy stretch marks are sexy and tattoos stretch marks to me are my they are my suit of armor you know it, it shows the battle wounds you've been through especially if you've ever given birth you know you've earned those marks baby as, you you do not have stretch marks i'm not i have a wound. couple i have a couple i i don't have many <laughs> but you know we all got them <laughs> now do I they come mind. from Stress marks come from being big and then you go small or being small and get big. Yeah. Well, I gained, um, you know, I've had times in life where I've gained 10 or 20 pounds at a time. And then that gave me the stretch marks. But so they're in my thighs and tush. But no, I didn't get them in my stomach for pregnancy at all. Like I really I didn't gain a lot of weight, I guess. And I don't know. I use some really good skincare, I guess, though. So. Yeah, the ones in the test says you you've lived a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so if sure, people let's want go to, with that, sure, let's go that, with that. that that's yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah, Esther, yeah. if if people want to connect with you online, yeah. how can they do that? So I have a special gift. So first of all, you can find me on Instagram at gorgeous Esther. That's my handle, or you can go to my website estherblum.com. And for your listeners, I have a special offer, which is a 30 minute one on one consultation. And to get that you go to estherblum.com forward slash call that C A L L. And that will entitle you to 30 minutes with me, where we can really address and solve a health problem that you're having. If you want to lose those 10 pounds, you're mm -hmm. having trouble sleeping at night, you're going through menopause, um, and you don't know what hormones to take or how to manage that or how, how to even get them tested, 
you come to me and we get on the phone for 30 minutes and we strategize how to move you through whatever mm. struggles you're facing. So it's estherblum.com forward slash C-A-L-L call. And it's Make just sure that you simple. It's real simple. And thank you so much for sitting down with me in this one-on-one. I've had a great time talking thank to you. you. I, I hope you had a great time with us. And uh, we definitely got to uh, connect again very, very soon. But, you know, I truly appreciate it. I'm going to start what you suggested for me tonight. So I'm going to start building that regiment so Good. that I can sleep at night. And I'm going to email you and let you know how it's going. I would love that. Dad, please keep me posted. We should do a follow-up. And you should actually take pictures in 30 days. Like, take pictures of yourself without a shirt on tonight and then do it again in 30 days. Uh -huh. And see what 30 days of sleep does to your body. It will be pretty uh -huh. amazing. Now you're okay. inspiring me. I'm like, I should get people to do a sleep challenge. I've done a protein challenge before, but I'm thinking I need to do sleep next. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay, yeah. so you say, take a picture of myself without a shirt on tonight yeah. and then yeah. thirty day, chart that course 30 days later and, and see what a different sleep makes. Yes, you would see a huge difference. I guarantee you drop a couple of percentage points of body fat easily. Okay, and, and yeah. should I should I start? I I tend to drink water when I wake up in the morning. So should I add a lemon or something to that? As you I, can. As I get up? You absolutely can. Okay, I'm gonna go buy some lemons today. I'm gonna add them to. to we have a <laughs> we have, we have a curfew here in Los Angeles, so you know it's a little different. And you live in New York, right? I'm just outside New York in Connecticut. Yeah, yeah. Okay. East yeah. Coast, girl. All East right, cool. Coast girl now. Yeah. So uh, I don't even need a curfew. I'm in bed early. <laughs> <laughs> Every night is a curfew for me. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, Esther. Well, we, we certainly appreciate you stopping by. And uh, I, I'm sure you've helped somebody get their ass off the fence today. And I'm just so grateful so. that you've been here. Thank you. I'm getting asses off fences for over 26 years now. I'm proud. I'm loving it. <laughs> and, and, and on top of getting their asses off the fence, they get rid of some of those tushy stretch marks. I That's love right. it. That's right. Tushy stretch marks. That's right. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you guys right back here next Tuesday as we talk health and wellness with some of the world's biggest leaders. Thank you, guys. Thanks again to my, my guest, Esther Blum, for joining us. And I'm grateful that she's helped you guys get your ass off the fence. And until next time, you guys know I'm Finch, and I'll see you right back here next week for Off the Fence. All right. Yo, 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 yo. You're in the mix. The world's finest, man. DJ. Just like now. Off the radio on the telly.